Welcome, this is Jessie from Jessie at Home. Today I'm going to show you how to make the That 70s Square. Here is one that is already done. I'm now going to make another one, and I'm just going to change the order of the colors on the second one that I make. For this one, my first color is going to be this bluish color. And we're going to start off by chaining four. Then slip stitch into the first chain that you made to form a ring. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the first chain. Just get your needle in there any way you want to. Yarn over, pull through everything, and I have made a ring. Now I'm going to double chain two into the ring. When I work into this ring, I'm also going to work over my tail. So I'm going to double chain two into the ring. So I'm going to insert my hook into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. There are now two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. There's one loop on my hook, and then there's two little legs coming off of that hook, okay? Coming off of that stitch. And I am going to insert my hook into the farthest uh, little vertical leg there. So here we go, inserting my hook into the farthest stitch or loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. There are two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through, and I have the double chain two. Now chain one. And then I'm going to double crochet, chain one, 15 times into the ring. So double crochet. And chain one. One. Do it again. Double crochet. Chain one, two. And we're going to keep going until we have 15. Okay, I was counting as I went, and I counted 15, but I'm going to double check. So, including the very first, the double chain two, plus the 15 double crochet, I should have a total of 16 of these little stitches coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, ending with a chain one. Awesome! So there's my 16, and now it says to fasten off and weave in ends. So I buried my scissors underneath that sample over here. All right, I'm going to cut my end. And now because I ended with a chain, rather than um, fastening off after the chain, I'm going to actually remake that chain around the stitch I would like it to be connected to since I'm fastening off here. So you notice there's the end of my double crochet, and then I just pulled that loop out. So it actually now still needs the chain again. Before I deal with this end, I'm actually, I like to deal with the very center end first. So here is my starting end. Here's the starting tail of my yarn. And for this, for this square, it's good to leave an open in the center, an opening in the center. Sure, you can pull this really tight and pull everything shut, but it's not going to lay nicely if you do it that way. It's meant to have that little hole opening in the center, okay? So I'm going to thread this up onto my yarn needle. Now, I like to continue once all the way around when I'm um, weaving in an end from an inner ring. Um, I just feel like it gives it a little bit more sturdiness, especially if you're somebody who's decided to use the, um, the magic ring or whatever. Weaving in one more time all the way around really gives it a little extra something, especially if you're using a sharp needle because you're actually going to be cutting through some of those threads. So you'll be going through the yarn in various places and it'll really weave in well. So I went all the way around once in the same direction I had already been going. I'm going to turn and I'm going to go just like partially around once so that there's one turn in my woven in end. And then make sure that we're still nice and open like I want to be. This end is woven in. I'm not going to bother clipping it yet because I still have one more end to weave in. So get that onto my needle. Right there, woven through the needle. Or threaded through the needle. And now here is that first stitch of the round, the double chain two. And we need to actually make this chain that's in between this double crochet and the double chain two. So I'm actually going to, to find the top loop of the double chain two. You see that top loop? I'm going to go underneath both loops. 
There we go. And I use the back end of the needle just to make sure that I'm going under the loops and not splitting them. I'm not pulling it tight because I'm actually making a chain here. Now I'm going to go back through my, my double crochet stitch back here. You see, here's the double crochet. I'm going to go back through that loop. Okay, there we go. So that I've created this chain on top. Okay, you want to try to make it about the same size as the rest of them. And then on the back, here is the double crochet. Here is my starting double chain two. I'm actually going to go all the way close to the top of that starting double chain two and sew all the way through the center of it. Okay, so you won't be able to see the needle on either side because it's going through the center of that starting double chain two. And that gives that little bottom loop of the chain. So you see I've made this, I just made this extra chain right here. So all the way down through here. And now I'm just going to bury it into my starting circle a little ways this direction. Okay. And then come back a little ways the other direction. Make sure everything is still nice and pretty on top and I can cut these two. All right, and now here's the front of my little round one, and we're ready to start with our next color. For the second color on this square, I'm going to use this kind of mustard color, and we start off with a standing double crochet in any one of the chain one spaces. To start a standing double crochet, I just have like a crossed loop here, but you can start with a slip knot on your hook. Either way works. And then you just make a double crochet. So you yarn over, insert your hook into the chain one space. Any chain one space in this case is fine. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now there's three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So you've made a oop, double crochet that isn't attached to anything beforehand. It's just got the knot or the, the tail of the yarn beforehand. Now, the continuation of this round is to chain two and then double crochet in the same space. So I chain two and now I'm putting another double crochet in that same chain one space. Okay. Now we chain one, skip a chain one space, and then double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the next chain one space. So we're skipping this one and in this one, we're going to put a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. We're going to repeat that around. So we chain one, skip a chain one space, and then in the next chain one space, we're going to double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and keep doing that all the way around. Okay, we have finished the last set of double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then we did our chain one, and now we're just going to slip stitch into the top of the beginning standing double crochet. So we're going into that top of that, yarn over, pull through everything, and there we have the end of round two. Round three, we're going to slip stitch into the chain two space. Then double chain two, chain two, then two double crochet all in this same chain two space. So first we do the double chain two, we insert our hook under the chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through everything. There's one loop on the hook and it has these two stitches coming off of it that each create this little vertical leg here. We're going to skip the first one and put our hook in the second one, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to chain two and then put two double crochet into the same chain two space. Now for the repeat section, we chain one, skip one of the chain ones, and then two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the next chain two space. Probably didn't need to write in skip the chain one since you're only working into the chain twos, but I was just trying to make the pattern friendly. Cause you know, smile. <laughs> I know, I'm a little goofy sometimes. All right, so we have two double crochet, chain two, 
two double crochet all in that same chain two space. We're going to chain one and then do that again. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way around, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the chain two space, chain one, skip the chain one space, and then repeat that all the way till we get back around and we'll finish up the round. I finished my last repeat. I have two double crochet chain, oh look at that, I have two double crochet chain one, two double crochet. If you did that and it was a while back and there was only one chain one in between the sets of two double crochet, it's really not the end of the world. It'll, the next round will work just fine. Don't, don't stress too much about it, but it was the very last one, so I'm just going to fix it. And then I end with a chain one. All right, but we're not totally done yet. Now what we need to do is we need to put one more double crochet before in the next chain two space, so it's right before that double chain two, so that we end up with essentially two double crochets, because the double chain two counts as a double crochet. Okay, and then we're going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning double chain two, and that is the end of round three. Round four, we slip stitch into the chain two space, and this is very similar to round three and also very similar to round five. Okay, so we slip stitch into the um, chain two space, and now we're going to start with a double chain two, which we should know how to do at this point, and then chain two, and then three double crochet. And I bet you can figure out where this is going. You can probably even figure out where round five is going, but I'll show you that one anyway as well. Okay, so we have three double crochet and then chain one. And now we hit our repeat section. We go into the next, we skip the chain one space and we go into the next chain two space and we're going to put three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So there's one, two, three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. Okay, and we're going to repeat that all the way around. So we still have to do the chain one, skip the chain one, and then three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the next chain two space. Okay, all the way around, and then we'll finish up this round and go on to the next. I finished that last repeat, and now we are back to that first chain two that we worked into to begin with, and we're going to put two more double crochet in at the beginning of that, so that we now have the three double crochet before the chain two, and then three double crochet afterwards. And now we're just going to slip stitch to the top of our starting double chain two. There we go. So now we have three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, then a chain one, and then repeat all the way around. Now that is the end of round four. Round five is going to be very familiar. We slip stitch into the chain two space, double chain two into the same chain two space, chain two, and then four double crochet into the same chain two space. Now we chain one, and now we get to the repeat section. We skip this chain one space. We go into this next chain two space and put four double crochet, chain two, four double crochet, all into this chain two space. All right, here we go. Four double crochet, chain two, four double crochet, on th all into that chain two space, then a chain one, a skip this chain one space, and repeat that all the way around, and then we will come back at the end of the last repeat and finish it up, but I'm sure you've figured out how to do that already. There's the end of my repeats for round five. Now we're going to finish this up by putting three more double crochets into this first chain two space three, and now we are going to slip stitch to the top of the starting double chain two. All right, and that is the end of round five. Now, 
do not fret that we have this curling thing going on, okay? It is all going to work out, trust me. Now for round six, which is the last round in this color, we are going to slip stitch into the chain two space, double chain two into that chain two space, I'm sorry, double chain three into that chain two space. So we finished our double chain two, now to double chain three, we're just going to repeat the last two steps again. We're going to insert our hook into, you see how there's these two legs coming off of the stitch on our hook? We're going to skip the first leg, insert the hook into the second leg, yarn over, pull up a loop, so there's two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two. Now instead of having a double chain two, we have a double chain three. And now we are going to place 10 treble into this same chain two space. And our double chain three is counting as our first treble. So we're going to do 10 more trebles, which is yarn over two, insert your hook, yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That was one. Again, yarn over twice, insert your hook into the chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, that was two more trebles. We're gonna do that until we've done 10 trebles. All right, so that was my 10th double treble. And for this round, I'd like to be sure that I really do have the correct number of stitches. This, one, this round, it really does matter. Uh, there are two more rounds that are affected by the number of stitches here, and if it's not correct, things will not look good. So we have the 10 trebles plus the, the one extra double chain three. So there should be 11 stitches in this little fan. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, perfect. Now we have our repeat section. We chain two, okay? This time it's a chain two here. Skip the chain one and then make 11 trebles into the next chain two space. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. You do the 11 trebles into the chain two space and then chain two, skip the chain one space, 11 trebles into the next chain two space, chain two, skip the chain one space, so on all the way around. Okay, that was my last chain two, and now you end this by slip stitching into the top of the beginning of the double chain three. Um, I'm gonna do the same little trick before that I did before, where I'm going to cut the yarn, here we go. I'm gonna remove that second chain, and then I'm actually, then I'm just gonna pull the yarn here. Okay, get my yarn needle, thread that up. Now I'm gonna make that last chain around the double chain three that I started with. So here's the top loop of the double chain three that I started with. And then there is the first of the chains. I'm going to go ahead and put my yarn through the top of that first chain. Okay, and now I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to take my needle here and I'm gonna go sew down through this double chain three. And then go just bury the yarn under some of these stitches and turn it around and go back through the other way a little bit. Okay, there you can see we have our chain two and I'm gonna weave in this end. We'll go back kind of underneath some of these. And then back the other way. And I can cut these. And here we have our flower that still needs those little inside bits. So that's what we're going to do next, is the inside bits of the flower. For round seven, you need a slip knot or just a um, 
twisted little loop like I have here. Choose any of these sets of 11 trebles and insert your hook into the top one. So you're just going underneath both of, both of the top loops of the very first of one of these sets of 11 trebles. You're going to grab that loop and pull it up, okay? And that counts as slip stitching into that first stitch. And now you're going to slip stitch into the rest of the other 10 of these trebles. And make sure you're doing this loosely. If you do it tight, you will, um, the, the, it just won't lay flat. It won't lay, it won't lay nicely. So make sure you are not pulling these super tight. Let them be loose. So that was one more. Remember, we already did the first one, so that one becomes our second one. We're going to go through all 11 of these. Okay, that was my 11th one. Now I'm going to chain one. Okay, now we're going to turn this so that I'm going working towards the center. And I'm going to, th this is going to get a little awkward with how you're holding things. It's just awkward. You'll, you'll get the hang of it eventually. You're going to slip stitch around this chain two space. Okay, now you're going to just chain one. Now you're going to slip stitch around the next chain space. And chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space chain one, slip stitch around the next chain space, chain one, slip stitch around the next chain space, chain one, and then slip stitch around the chain space that's from round one. It'll be the same color as what you're currently using. Okay, now this one you want to kind of pull kind of tightly, not too tight, but just pull it kind of tightly. And then you're going to spin all the way back around so you're facing, you're going out towards the outside again. You're going to just chain one here, then slip stitch around the next chain space. Chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space. Chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space. Chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space. Chain one. Now here's our very last chain space. We're going to slip stitch around that. And then chain one again. Okay, and that makes that little vein inside, it kind of makes the outline of these two little petals of this flower. Now there are 11 trebles. We're going to slip stitch into each of these 11 trebles. Remember, we're always making sure that we're doing this, this entire row. We don't want to be too tight. The only one we really want to do tightly is the first one that we, is the one that we chain around the very center. So that was one, two, and 11. And then we chain one and we keep doing that. So we turn, so we're going towards the center. Slip stitch around the chain space, chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space, chain one. Slip stitch around the next chain space chain one. I'm going to do this all the way down till we get to the center. We're almost there. Next chain space, chain one, and then the center. Pull that one a little bit, spin, and go back up. We've already slip stitched around that chain space, so we're going to chain one. Slip stitch around the chain space, chain one, keep doing this all the way up, chain one, and then the last one around the chain space, chain one, and then slip stitch into these three double trebles. We're going to keep going all the way around. Okay, and here is my last little chain one. And now, to finish off, you slip stitch into the same 
space that you slip stitched into the first time, the same stitch. Rather than doing that, I'm going to again make one of my little fancy pants endings here. I'm going to grab my yarn needle. I did my chain one. I'm going to pull through, and I did have that chain one this time, okay? Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yarn, and again, I'm using the end, the, the back end of my yarn needle so I don't actually split any threads. I'm going underneath this very first little um, surface chain that we see. Okay, and now I'm not pulling this tight. I'm going to go back through that chain, the last chain that we made, so that I'm creating that little stitch there, okay? Now we're going to turn around, and I'm going to weave this end through by, you see this little straight dashed line here? I'm just going to kind of go under, I'm going to go back and forth under a few of these. So I'm going like from bottom to top, and then from top to bottom. I'm trying not to catch any of the yellow thread, only the blue. All right, and get that there. Okay, it still looks good on the front. And then I'm just going to kind of turn around and go a little bit kind of straight through underneath that dotted line, making sure not to catch any of the top loops. I want those top loops to still be nice and pretty because we'll see those from the front. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I have woven in that end. Now I need to go back and weave in this end. My little starting tail. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of come and go underneath here. I'm not going to mess with these two loops here because these two loops are actually going to be used soon and I don't want to mess them up at all. So I'm just going to kind of go underneath those, make sure that I don't actually split those yarns or anything. And now I'm just going to kind of almost like whip stitch around a few of these going down. It was only that top set of the, of the um, two loops that I need to worry about. I don't need to worry about the rest. I'm not pulling this tight because I don't want it to make it end up looking different than the rest of them. I'm just kind of whip stitching a little bit and then I'm going to go straight underneath those whip stitches and make sure that I come out before these top two um, back loops because I don't want to mess them up. Okay, again, not pulling tight. I don't want to gather this in any sort of way. I'm just trying to weave in my ends. Get rid of my needle and I can't cut with a crochet hook. I cut with scissors, so I should grab those. Grab my scissors, snip those ends. Flip this over, and here we have this very pretty little flower. I love this flower. I think it is stunning. Mm -hmm. 